How's it going guys? I kind of fancy doing something a little bit different, but I wanted to do a top 10 and I wanted to talk about some of the decks that I used to use in the past because throughout your career as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, you tend to go through some decks as the meta changes and I just wanted to talk about some of the decks that I used back in the day. If I was to quickly summarise my Yu-Gi-Oh sort of experiences, basically for a long time I only played Yu-Gi-Oh uh, for fun, had no idea the competitive rules, had to play properly really, mainly went off the show rules so I just kind of used whatever decks and at some point uh, one of my friends we used to play together quite a lot and then when we started taking it seriously playing each other we started to develop more uh, competitive-ish decks then we went to our first locals I got absolutely wrecked in my first duel so I decided that I, I kind of need to make a better deck so I made a better deck started making better decks then eventually we got to the point where we went to some um, regionals Went to some regionals, uh, went to a YCS. I only ever went to one YCS, my friend went to quite a few. But uh, the one YCS I went to was really, really good. And I actually won uh, a tournament in there, even though I didn't win the whole thing. But I did get through to the second round. I had a lot of fun and... Nowadays, I don't really play anymore, so I've been out of the card game for quite a while. But I do play online nowadays on stream, so I get to see some of the new current meta competitive decks, which is uh, very confusing as opposed to some of the older decks, uh, if I'm being completely honest with you. But um, yeah, let's get started with this with my uh, 10 decks. So these 10 decks that I've chosen are some of the more memorable ones that I have. I've kind of dabbled in different things, but these are the ones that really stuck with me throughout the years. So here we go. Number 10. First things first, at number 10, I imagine every single person who has ever played Yu-Gi-Oh, I hope, has had one of these decks, which I'm just going to call the miscellaneous deck. My first deck I ever had was basically, I was watching the show, wanted some card packs, kind of like how Pokemon was a thing, uh, got the cards together, basically just put a couple in that I thought were cool or quite powerful. Basically a 60 card deck, <laughs> used that and only played against myself really. Uh, I don't think I even had enough cards to have a second deck to play against. But uh, yeah, that was my, my first deck. Uh, some of the cards that I remember that stood out in that deck. My strongest monster that I had back in the day was Big Koala. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I've still got him somewhere. He's a little like tattered. But Big Koala was like my strongest uh, attack point monster. One of my first shinies I had was Valkyrie on the Magnoria. But my, my first secret rare. But I never actually got to use it because I never had Alpha, Beta and Gamma. So I... But I don't think I've ever summoned that in at all. I used to use a card called Deslacuda. I actually really liked it. Of course, this was back when I didn't really know how that flip summon effect worked. So I kind of assumed if you set Deslacuda face down, even if it was attacked, when it's flipped up, you get to draw a card. So I kind of like abused that back in the day. But that's before you know the rules. I don't know. And uh, one of my favorite spell cards that I have, which has uh, been banned for far too long, was uh, this little baby here, which is Harpy's Feather Duster. Um, I bought a Yu-Gi-Oh game called Yu-Gi-Oh Championship 2004 or 2002 I think it was and uh, I think this card came with it uh, still in pretty good condition really for what this is but uh, still waiting for this to come off the ban list so maybe I can use it one day yeah that was my first deck back when I was a young kid and uh, I didn't know what the real rules were yeah first deck Okay, so at number 9, I've put my first structure deck that I bought. Now, I can't actually remember the other structure decks that were available at the time, but the one I decided to go for was one called uh, Invincible Fortress, which, uh, <laughs> it wasn't the best looking at it back now. Like, I actually tried to rebuild it. I rebuilt it, and it's pretty terrible. But let me just explain what it is for those that don't know. The way that the structure deck worked was, basically, it was a defensive deck where you had high defense point monsters, and you had cards which could kind of shuffle them around, and if they were to attack into those defense position monsters, and they were to, like, be weaker than the defense... Uh, value then there was a field spell that allowed you to do double damage as well And there were some cards that did double with that as well So that was kind of one way to deal damage with the deck another one is just flip effects were a big thing in this You were able to flip summon a monster return a monster on your opponent's side of the field back to the hand And then at the end of the turn you could flip it back down So that was where the flip effects work and of course because this is my first structure deck I didn't really know how that worked properly So when I'd set say uh, guardian sphinx face down when it was attacked into and it was flipped face up I just assumed that that would work its effect, so I would return all my opponent's monsters back to the hand, and then my turn would come back on and I'd flip it back down. I won a lot of duels against my friend with this deck, but that is because I didn't know how the deck worked, so yeah, my bad. I was still young to the game, what can I say? The boss monster of this deck was Exard Master of the Guard. I think the name is right. Do I still have that card? So yeah, this guy was the boss monster, Exard Master of the Guard. Yeah, structure deck 7. 
4,000 defense, zero attack. Basically, the enemy can summon him is by tributing a Sphinx monster on your side of the field, which typically tend to be either Cryo Sphinx, Heliocross Sphinx, or Guardian Sphinx. Guardian Sphinx was really good, by the way. Like, I actually think that's a really good card still to this day, even though it's like gotta try to keep it on the field for one turn but what this guy was able to do was every time you flip summon a monster you could deal a thousand damage so that was kind of how you would burn your opponent and with this guy in defense there's not much that could get over four thousand defense so yeah it was, it was pretty damn cool in the end though i didn't really have an affinity with rock monsters or playing that defensively so i had to switch up my formula eventually and i just parted ways with the structure deck i think when i was using this this was still before i bought any card sleeves this is how you know i'm still early into the Yu-Gi-Oh card game the next structure deck I got was the Rise of the Dragon Lord structure deck. Up until this point, decks had mainly revolved around attributes or types of monsters. So you'd have like a water structure deck or a fire structure deck. And it wasn't actually till this deck where themes and strategy were involved in the actual structure deck. So the way that the Rise of the Dragon Lord structure deck worked was you wanted to dump your powerful monsters into the graveyard and you wanted them in there so you was able to special summon them back. The boss monster of that was Fel Grand Dragon, which I'm very sad to say I've traded away wasn't that brilliant of a card to be completely honest with you. It needed to be special summoned from the graveyard uh, and it had to go there by being summoned to the field first. Pretty awkward to be summoned if I'm being completely honest with you. It was a cool card but there were some other cards in the deck that I thought were a little bit better. I think Guardian Angel Joan was in there um, which when you destroyed a monster you could increase your life points. Is it Dark Blaze Dragon? You can special summon it to the field or you can normal summon it or something like that with half the attack. It's got 1200 because special summon it from the grave it gets doubled attack. And there's some cards like that, so I thought the deck was pretty good. It actually lasted a while. Wasn't the most amazing deck either, um, but I did like the deck. And it lasted a little while, but not too long for me to be honest with you. So the next structure deck I bought was the Machina Mayhem deck, which back in the day, I used to pronounce Machina as Machina. Because it's spelt Machina, if I'm being completely honest with you. But I didn't know the phrase uh, Machina, like Deus Ex Machina. So, uh, of course, I've been calling them Machina for ages. So, uh, apologies for that, anyway. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think I traded away Machina Fortress back in the day, because it was quite a good card, to be honest with you. He had a very unique ability, where I'm pretty sure he was able to discard himself for the cost of his own summon. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's true. These are the only guys I think I have left, and Machina Sniper isn't even from the right one. It's a secret rare from... Uh, Legendary Collection, Yugi's World. But uh, I do have these other two Machina cards. So that deck was mainly about Union Monsters and getting monsters on the field and equipping them with other Union Monsters. And that deck didn't really sit with me for too long, but I did like it because it was a machine-based deck, which I feel like I had a real affinity for. I wanted to create a machine deck after this, but uh, it'd be a while until I can get it. One of the structure decks that I really wanted, but I'd never actually had the chance to get, was the Ancient Gear structure deck, which I thought was absolutely awesome. Ancient Gear Gazastron Dragon is still an awesome card to this day, and i actually seen a lot of play in one of my future decks that I'm going to talk about. But I didn't actually have it because one of my friends bought that, and I didn't want to buy the same deck if I ever played against them. So, unfortunately, I had to miss out on that. So, that would have been my alternative. But, uh, yeah, moving on. Okay, so at this point in my dueling career, we're starting to get more focused on the actual rules of the game. No longer are we just going by sort of the anime rules, which don't ever do that, but we're starting to take it a little bit more seriously. I've got all my card sleeves now ready to start playing properly, got some deck mats that we bought, and we started buying cards online. This is what point I'm in at the moment in my Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, career, if you will. So I buy the Dragon's Collide deck, which was the first structure deck to feature two boss monsters on its artwork. And those two monsters were Dark Flare Dragon and Light Pulsar Dragon. This was the first deck as well that I actually bought three of the structure decks for, so that I could have three copies of everything, so I was able to actually build the deck around this. Now this deck was actually really good, and it still sees a lot of play now, but it took a different form. And this was something that I sort of implemented as well, which was adding the Light Swarm engine to it, which became Chaos Light Swarm or Light Swarm Chaos. It's something along them lines. But this was actually one of my main decks for a while. Basically, the biggest expense of this deck that I had to get was getting free solar recharges, which I think back in the day, I think that cost me like £10 each, which for me at the time was actually paying a lot of money for something like this. The most expensive card I ever bought, because I didn't really like spending money on individual cards, though I could see their value. The most I spent, it was either on the Legendary Six Samurai Shien, which I think I paid £25 for, or it was the BLS, which I paid £30 for. Those were my two most expensive cards. My friend who I played with took it much more seriously for me because he always wanted the meta decks, and I've seen him pay, I think it was £120, or it was £80, something along them lines, for a wind-up Zen mains when that was brand new. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, £30 is the highest I spent. I 
definitely wasn't fully in it, but we'll get into that in the future. So with this deck, I started to take it to my locals. I uh, didn't actually do that well with it, if I'm being completely honest with you. I think it was like a 50-50 win or loss, really. I always beat people that were not brilliant at the game, but when I started playing people that had better decks than me or a similar sort of level of deck, uh, I wasn't the best with it, really. Every single deck I've ever had, the thing that has suffered the most was always been my extra deck, because I could never fork out for those extra deck cards, because I was just too stingy. But uh, that was always my problem. I never had a fantastic extra deck. So, uh, yeah, never mind. And I don't think Xyz monsters are a thing just yet. We're in the synchro age at the moment. So next up on the list was one of the decks that I remember quite fondly, but it is technically a troll deck. I actually built a empty jar deck. This was back when Morphing Jar wasn't banned. If you don't know what an empty jar deck is, it's basically one of those troll decks where you don't give your opponent a turn. This deck revolved around using cards that flipped Morphin Jar back up and back down so that you could thin out your opponent's deck so they have no cards left. You end your turn, their turn comes, and they've got no cards, they lose automatically. Uh, I actually have uh, my old deck video here. As well, I made a video back in the day on how to actually use this deck, which is terrible quality. But this just shows what sort of time period I was in and like how I was playing the game at the moment. But I never used this competitively. I never wanted to play against someone with this. I just used it to play against my friend because I thought it was fun. And it was pretty damn consistent if I'm being completely honest with you. However, when Effect Veiler became a thing, then, you know, it wasn't as good anymore because people just Effect Veiler, my Morphing Jar, I had to end my turn and uh, that was no longer a thing anymore. So, yeah, short spree, but it was a fun deck. So before we get to the big three, I just want to quickly talk about some bonus decks that I might as well bring up. First of all, uh, this one has a story that's attached to it. The deck, I think it's called Zombie World. Now, I never wanted this deck, didn't really like the zombie monsters, if I'm being completely honest with you. But uh, a friend of mine really wanted to get into the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, and he's never, he never played it before. So we all went to a shop that was by me called Forbidden Planet. We went in, we bought him a deck, which was the Zombie World structure deck. And I remember he got outside, and he opened the, the structure deck like this, and he went <laughs> like that, and the, the deck flew out of the box hit the floor and went straight into the middle of the road. Luckily no cars ran it over, but there was like a big dent in the corner of all the cards. And on the bus journey back, he basically looked at all the cards and went, I don't think I want these anymore. I was like, oh, uh, okay then, I'll buy them off ya. And he went, okay, how much? I was like, well, they're damaged now, so uh, I'll give you like this. I think it was like four or five pounds less than he paid for it. Probably not that much, don't be silly. But uh, yeah, I bought that deck off him, put him in these really, really horrible blue sleeves, which I don't even know if I have anymore, and uh, I played with them at home. Never took them into a competitive scene or anything like that, I just I just had the Zombie World structure deck. Boss monster of that deck was Vampire Genesis, which I hardly ever summoned. The better monster in that deck, I think, was Vampire Lord, the one where it attacks and deals damage. Your opponent sends a card from the deck to the grave. I actually quite like that card, even though it's probably not very practical now because people want stuff in the grave. But uh, yeah. Just thought I'd bring that up. Another one of the bonus decks I made was a Ultimate Ancient Gear OTK deck, which I had to use for quite a while. What this deck revolved around was basically getting the fusion materials in your hand, activating power bonds, summoning an 8,800 attack point Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem, attacking your opponent di directly or just doing piercing damage. Normally that would be enough to OTK. If not, they'd be on the cusp of dying. And then on the next turn, you attack them again. Even if they destroy this card, you can special summon a Ancient Gear Golem from your graveyard. So you kind of had that as a backup. Plus, Spell and Trap cards couldn't be activated in response to this. The problem with this deck was it was very, very inconsistent. And you bricked a lot because cards like Card Card D were either too expensive or weren't a thing back then. And there was a lot of problems with it. But uh, I played it for a while. All right. And the last thing I wanted to quickly bring up was my YCS 2012 deck. Basically, we had a battle pack tournament there. My deck actually was really, really good. I actually got a tour guide as one of my pulls, and I got an extra deck cards. Um, I actually have a video of the deck that I used back in the day, so if you want to check that out. But uh, that deck was good to me. The only reason I lost was because I played someone, and he got his um, Jinzo on the field, and I was absolutely stumped. Didn't know how to get over it, so unfortunately I lost. And I didn't get through to the finals, but I did get through to the second round of the tournament. So, uh, yeah. Never mind. This one comes with a little bit of a story. Of course, when watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, people tend to have their favourite characters or even just their favourite decks from the series. From the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series, I immediately really liked the character Zane Truesdale. Specifically from his attitude, um, I, I just quite liked it. But his deck, I thought, was amazing. Like most people, they really like the Cyber Dragon archetype. But for me, it stuck with me for a very, very long time. Uh, just seeing... Jaden lose for the first time, I thought was, well, this guy is different. But seeing that Cyber End Dragon on the field with 8,000 attack, and just the Cyber Dragon monsters in general, just machine 
dragons I just thought were amazing. And I've always had a f an affinity really with machine-esque things like the character I picked on Time Splits 2 was R109. Always quiet the films with a robot that sacrifices himself like Terminator 2, Wally, things like that. I don't know, they just get me. And uh, all games nowadays I've, I've picked machines, I've even got a goddamn robotic tattoo so <laughs> that explains it really as soon as the cyber dragon tin came out i had to buy one of these to get the cyber dragons in secret rare um, i bought another one so that i could have two because they were quite expensive for me back in the day buying the tins because um, i didn't have a job or anything like that and i was never able to get a third tin because by the time i could afford a third tin they were so expensive to buy them so i kind of just let that slide and to this day i wish i had one more cyber dragon from the uh in secret rare i mean obviously i have Loads and loads of counterparts to them now, and even normal or uh, super rare, but pfft, who wants that? So my first draft of the Cyber Dragon deck wasn't amazing. It had like three proto cybers in. Uh, it might have had Cyber Dragon Dre or Sway, whatever his name is. It had Cyber Twin Dragon, Cyber End Dragon. It had the Light Hex Sealed Fusion, which I used to play wrong back in the day as well. I used to be able to have like say two proto cybers on the field and a Light, light Hex Sealed Fusion. Activate the Light Hex Sealed Fusion's ability to tribute them all to Special Summon a Cyber End Dragon. Can't actually remember if you were able to do that anymore because I can't remember what Cyber End Dragon's uh, description was now, if you could summon it or not. Basically, that was a thing. With Future Fusion as well, with Chimera Tech Over Dragon, it just made the deck absolutely fantastic. Took it to my first uh, Locals as one of my main decks uh, back in the day. And this was the moment where I realised that I had to step up my game, because I took that deck... And at this point, I'd only been playing against my friend at home and like sort of practicing against him. So at my first locals, the first person I play that is um, quite competitive, he basically, I get my field all ready and set. My opponent looks at my field and he goes, I tribute all your monsters to summon Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. I was like, oh shit. Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon was the bane of my life back in the day. It basically ruined me from playing Cyber Dragons competitive, um, which made me really sad because I really liked the deck. But I decided then that, no, that's too big of a weakness to have with this deck. Everyone's going to tech these in because there was a few machine decks like the wind-ups and things like that. So I was like, goodbye Cyber Dragons, I'm going to have to leave you for a while. And um, they did get replaced with something else, but that's my number one spot and we'll talk about that in a bit. So then, when the Dark World Structure Deck came out, I really liked these cards. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy these. Bought three copies of the Structure Deck, made myself a Dark World Deck, bought some, a couple other things that I thought I needed. Uh, Dark Smog was a big one, I think it was quite expensive back in the day. But I got that, made myself a deck. It was great, really loved the Dark World Deck. But that was at the time when people were actually playing it and there was a lot of mirror matches with Dark World, which became an absolute hassle. And unfortunately, Dark World couldn't really stand up to some of the other decks. I think Hieratics were a thing back then. Uh, I can't actually remember what was um, what was in the competitive scene back then, but Dark World did me well, enjoyed them. They basically stayed as my second deck for the majority of this time. But yeah, Dark Worlds were really, really cool. Uh, liked them a lot. So this one was arguably my second favourite deck I have ever had, which was the Six Samurai deck. This is the guy that I bought back in the day for like £25, and uh, I was absolutely like blown away to get this because my friend bought it for me uh, he said he knew a guy that would might be able to get him for me and he got it me and he brought it to me and I gave him the money and um, this deck I really really enjoyed playing because I just I liked it so much uh, got all the cards for it asceticism of the six samurai is a great card this was back as well when gateway of the six samurai and um, I can't remember the one cards of six samurai the one where you can put counts on it and draw two cards you could basically do a thing where you looped them all so you could keep drawing cards and keep getting cards. It was a really, really powerful deck in, back in the day and the ability to negate one of your opponent's spell or trap cards once per turn was great. As well, you was able to get uh, Naturia Beast out so you could negate any cards by discarding cards on the top of your deck. So that was a really fun deck and I really enjoyed that. But before I actually had that version of the competitive deck when you had all like, the main stuff in, I actually played a non-competitive one uh, before it was cool. Uh, where basically I'd have all the different versions of the six samurais like Iru, uh, Kizan, Zanji, things like that. I have like one or two copies of them and basically I stack my deck full of like equip cards where they'd gain like a thousand attack points or 700 and something like that. And I also put in Gif, Gilford the Legend, the one that equips all the equip cards from the graveyard to himself when he's summoned to the field or something along them lanes. Um, but no, that deck actually worked for me for quite a while um, in a non-competitive sense. Uh, it's pretty good. I think it was not Iru. Um, I can't remember the one. The one that I can attack directly. P 
put him with loads of uh, equip spell cards. He can attack directly. Your opponent can't attack him because you can destroy other cards on the field. And it was pretty good. I liked it. I'd also packed Great Shogun Shien, which was one of my first ultimate rare cards. So this was absolutely awesome for me. And I really like playing this card. People didn't like to play this guy too much, but I think thought his effect was brilliant. So I always played him. Okay then, so last but certainly not least, my main and last competitive deck that I ever played, uh, which basically lived inside of my deck box, it was my Malefic Drain deck. Now I know what you're thinking, you haven't really listed off that many meta decks. Well, it's at this point in my Yu-Gi-Oh! competitive career that I thought to myself, I don't really want to spend too much money on buying all these meta decks because they keep changing and they keep changing then people have to adapt and it's just really hard to sort of get used to all these new decks and things like that it was basically my mindset at the time and I didn't want to spend too much money on building a deck I also thought to myself that I didn't like the style of play the meta play and I wondered if there was something that I could do to sort of counter this this is where I discovered anti-meta style decks and basically doing some research on the internet I found a guy I can't remember his name but he topped um, some YCS somewhere and he played a deck called Malefic Skill Drain and I thought this is pretty cool it's ace monster is uh, Malefic Cyber End Dragon higher tap point monsters utilizes the spell card Skill Drain to stop mainly the meta decks that's awesome so what I did was um, using the Malefic cards that I had in my deck I built the deck to the best of my ability played it a couple times then I sort of readjusted it to something that fit my style and I fell in love with it. It was honestly my favourite deck to play because I can't tell you how satisfying it is to let your opponent do their turn, then your turn happens, you activate your Mystical Space Typhoon to hopefully clear whatever back row they have. It's better if they don't have any. You special summon a 4,000 attack point monster on your first turn with literally no drawbacks whatsoever. You attack into their monster, that is say face up on the field, why not? They're alright with taking like 3,800 damage or something like that. What do you do? You drop the limiter removal in the damage step, you double that damage, and you've practically won in your first turn. That was one of the most satisfying things ever. And this was before the error tear to some of the, the field spell cards, because I used to play Gear Town in that deck. So this is something that you do. You'd have your Gear Town on the field, you summon your Malefic monsters. If all your Malefics are eliminated and you've got other field spells in your hand, what you could do back then is set another field spell over Gear Town, and you'd be able to special summon a Gadgetron Dragon from your deck straight to the field. And that was amazing. You just get a 3,000 attack point monster that can't be uh, affected by spell or trap cards during the battle phase. And it was great. You had Beast King Barbaros as well with Skill Drain. I had low Loads of different deck profiles back in the day. Uh, if you go and check my deck profile videos, you can check them all. But things I did include in the deck still was I kept two copies of Cyber Dragon in the deck because it was awesome. Malefic Stardust Dragon at two or three typically. Gravekeeper's Commandant. Of course, the Beast King Barbaros. Malefic Cyber End Dragon as my boss monster. Um, literally one of my favorite cards ever. Uh, love it so much. It was what made me really happy was the fact that as I wasn't able to play Cyber Dragons anymore, they were sort of spiritually there with me in the Malefic deck. Even though they were corrupt versions of them, I still was able to keep Cyber End Dragon at three in my extra deck, have two Cyber Dragons in the deck, and have three Malefic Cyber End Dragons, and that was awesome. Plus I got Stardust in there, pretty cool. One of my favorite stories about this deck as well was I went to a Regionals and uh, I was playing against some guy, and my first turn, I open, look at my hand, I activate Necro Valley, then I activate this bad boy here, which was Royal Tribute, which used to be at three, and uh, I activated Royal Tribute, he discarded, I think, four out of the five cards he had in his hand, or something like that, uh, and he basically just went, yep, you've won, uh, I quit, you win, and I was like, I've never won using one card before, well, two technically, but uh, that was like a really great moment in uh, like playing this deck, which I really, really liked. And I might as well mention, it was the first deck where I started to like buy cards to just upgrade it, so I could have like shiny limiter removals, um, other shiny cards. I never got three shiny mystical space typhoons, which was kind of sad not to get, but uh, shiny necro valleys were a thing. And this was also back when Drain was at free, and uh, I managed to get them all in Starfoil great absolutely love this deck and this deck was one of my favorite decks and still is one of my favorite decks to play online but guys that is my 10 decks that i remember playing with basically uh, i would love to hear all about your decks let me know what you think about my decks uh want to know your 10 decks that you have played that you remember fondly in order of your favorite decks if you want to or just in the order that you played them don't really mind but uh, i'd love to hear them in the comment section below just thought about doing something different for this video why not thanks a lot for watching guys see you next time